As of today, Google Chrome browser still controls around 65 to 70% of the market share, but that seems to be changing rapidly. And as a longtime Google Chrome browser user, last month was a huge wake up call for me as we went through the YouTube censorship debacle where they were taking down and removing a lot of cryptocurrency channels. And that helped me realize that I need to stop being so reliant on Google services. And I've been following the development and the growth of the new Brave browser over the past couple of years and over the past few weeks have recently done a deep dive into the browser to figure out what's better, Chrome or Brave. And instead of just using my own anecdotal evidence, I went to you guys on Twitter and I asked, is there any valid reason to keep using Chrome over the Brave browser or is Brave superior in every way? And it was really surprising. Out of over 1,600 people, 75% of you guys said that Brave was the clear winner. So in today's episode, we're going to take a look at where Brave is today in early 2020. We'll talk about some of the common myths and misconceptions about this browser, and I'll show you why I have completely jumped ship from Chrome and am exclusively using Brave today. Now, if you're new to Brave, let's quickly talk about what this browser is all about and why it's gaining in popularity so quickly. So Brave is a privacy-focused browser that's meant to be faster and more efficient than other browsers. And Brave is also implementing and testing a new economic model that helps users and creators interact with each other in a closer and more transparent way. And I think this is huge because big companies like Google and Facebook have been exploiting our data without being transparent about it. It. And one of the biggest objections that people usually have when they think about changing browsers is, well, I know the browser that I'm using and it works fine. And what about my bookmarks and my extensions and my password manager? And one thing that's nice about Brave is it's actually built on Chromium, which is the baseline to Chrome, except Brave doesn't have all of Google's spyware. So it looks and feels very, very similar to Chrome. And I've been able to import and use all of my bookmarks. And so far, I haven't had any issues using any of the existing Chrome extensions. So I've been able to import my password manager, all the SEO tools that I use. So really, it was a seamless transition for me. And there were a couple of people that mentioned in the comments here that they were having issues with some of the extensions. But so far, I haven't had any issues. Now, Brave claims to be able to load pages three to six times faster. And there have been other people that have run speed tests. So I'll link some of those up in the show notes. And I can say in my own experience, I feel like Brave is a lot lighter and faster than Chrome because a lot of the extra extensions that I would have to load into Chrome for privacy stuff, a lot of that, those tools are actually built natively into the Brave browser. For example, a lot of the ad blocking stuff, HTTPS, um, just all of the things that that really are important for browsing in today's world are natively built into this. So I think that's pretty nice. And another thing that I think is just huge is Brave has built in privacy windows with Tor. And in the show notes, I'll link up an overview of what Tor is, but basically it is like the best way to browse anonymously on the web. And let's talk about Brave Rewards, which is the economic model that Brave is currently testing on the world right now. And I'll start by saying this. Anytime there's a new token or a new cryptocurrency or a new economic model being proposed in the crypto space, it usually brings a lot of skepticism, which I think is good. You know, we saw a lot of scams and a lot of ICOs from 2017 that did exit scams. And really the only utility tokens that I like in the crypto space are ones that are tied to real products. And I feel like Brave is a good example of that. Now we may fast forward in a few years and say, wow, what a success Brave Rewards was, or it could turn out to be a huge failure. I don't know, but I just think it's cool. And I think it's a really good test and a push in the right direction because the old school economic model of how the internet makes money today based on data mining and ads 
ads is just not right. And I think I, I commend Brave for taking a step in that direction of trying to redefine and really democratize how ads work and how users get compensated and how content creators get compensated. So the two main ways that Brave Rewards works is number one, as a user, you can actually get paid basic attention tokens or BAT, which is Brave's native crypto token, or as a content creator, you can get tips or monthly automatic contributions from other people that are using the Brave browser. Now to check out the Brave Rewards section of this, just go to settings. And by the way, you'll notice the settings of Brave look really similar to Chrome because this is built on Chromium, just doesn't come with all of uh, Google's spyware. And if you come here to the Brave Rewards tabs, this is where you can either choose to turn on ads so you can actually get paid to view ads, or if you don't want to, you can just turn those off. You can also set up a wallet. So in this new browser, you can see I funded it with a hundred bat and you can either auto contribute, which will split up whatever monthly contribution you want to make to the community, uh, based on the sites that you visit. Um, or you can go down and select tips to your favorite creators. So again, you have a lot more control over this. And I just think that testing new economic models like this are so, so important because again, it gives power and control back to you and me creators, users, and we can directly contribute to each other without having that Google or that Facebook intermediary. And when it comes to syncing your rewards wallet and your bookmarks, you can do that pretty easily here. Now, I will say I did discover one glitch with this, which was quickly fixed. It like duplicated my bookmarks, but that was really the only technical issue that I've had to date. And the one thing I'm not a huge fan of is the fact that Brave is integrated with Uphold which is a centralized company that holds your tokens and that you'll manage the rewards program through. So in the future, I would like to see a more decentralized option for people to use. But all in all, I think the Brave Rewards ecosystem is definitely a step in the right direction. And you can see here, the basic attention token does trade on most of the uh, major crypto exchanges. So there is some decent liquidity there. And as far as a token, I don't really look at this as a speculative thing. You can see uh, at the time of this video, you know, the token has been overall fairly flat throughout its price history. And I actually think that's a good thing. Um, where the token is most valuable, in my opinion, is when the most amount of people are actually using it, not really hoarding it, right? The idea behind this is you want to earn rewards and then contribute back to creators. And the better that ecosystem becomes, the stronger the browser and the token become. Where I think it fails is if everybody just tries to hoard it and get rich with price appreciation, if nobody's using the token, then it very well could fail. So my goal is to put any bat that I actually earn right back into the ecosystem to other creators and websites and contributors that are adding value in the cryptocurrency community. So getting set up with the Brave browser is pretty simple. Step one, you download it. Step two, you import your bookmarks. Step three, you add any extensions that you previously had in Chrome. And then step four is if you want to participate in the rewards program, you set up a wallet, you fund it if you want to contribute, you turn on ads if you want to earn rewards from watching or viewing ads. And that's basically it. So again, I, I think it's very interesting that even this early in Brave's development, 75% of you guys said that Brave wins hands down. And I can say after just a few weeks of using the Brave browser exclusively, there hasn't been any point in time where I went, man, I really wish I didn't uninstall Chrome. If anything, it's just been a net positive in every way. 
And I get to experiment with a new economic model that I think is just really fun and cool and a step in the right direction from taking the control and the profits and the power from the centralized entities like Google and Facebook and giving it back to creators and users. So question of the day, for those of you that have been using the Brave browser, please leave me a comment explaining what you like about the browser, what you dislike about the browser. And for those of you that are new to Brave and maybe new to thinking about uh, changing the economic model of the way the internet works with advertising, what do you think would be a good route for us as a crypto community to take? Is it direct tipping? Is it auto sharing like in the Brave browser or is there something else, right? I think we're at a really important moment in time where Google and Facebook have been making so much money exploiting our data and people are starting to wake up to the fact that it's important to control that, right? And to cut off a lot of the trackers and to just reclaim control and even get a piece of the pie if an economic model works out in that way. So again, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next episode. Take care.